What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another video and this one's a really special and fun one because one, this is actually a pretty big high stakes cash game video. Two, it's the first cash game session I've played after the Hustler live stream where I got destroyed and <laughs> just crushed. I was trying to rebound back in the cash game scene and no better way to do it than playing in a fun home game. Playing 2550 and this one's just um, just pretty wild. That's odd to say. One thing before I want to say before we get into the video is that there's a fun meetup game going on pretty soon in Vegas at MGM Grand on May 15th. So it's happening in a few days. If you need a last minute reason to go book a flight to Vegas for a weekend, this is it. Meetup game hosted by myself and Mariano. So it'll be a fun time at MGM Grand. It's a Sunday, so it'll be from 1 to 6 p.m. I'm sure we'll stay for a little bit later for drinks and meeting up with everyone and chatting and just meeting everyone that supports the vlog. So looking forward to the event. It's happening in a few days. And without further ado, let's see if I can rebound from the disastrous Hustler live stream experience onto the cash game felt we go. Starting things off here in this 2550 home game, there's a 10,000 max buy-in and one of the first hands I pick up pocket nines in early position. Action folds to me and I raise it up to $150 and only the small blind makes the call. We're off to a flop of 877 rainbow and here he checks it over to me, got an overpair on this paired board, happy to bet it and I size to $100 and for this sizing he decides on a call. The turn comes the three of clubs and he checks again and on this very safe card for my pair of nines, happy to amp up the aggression, bet for value once again here and I size to 400. For 400 bucks, he calls once again, so a little bit suspicious of what he could have and we're off to a river which comes another eight. Double paired board now, not loving the situation and even worse, he leads for $600. Ugh. Okay, I mean, I don't love the situation because he's repping full houses, and I guess full houses are hard to make, but <sighs> I'll pay him off with my overpair, hoping he just has a missed draw or something. I call, he has ace king for ace high, and I win. So nice spot to just take down the first hand of the night. Was in a pretty tough spot this river here, but happy to make the call and win. Next, the action gets bumped up already. There's a $100 straddle to start off this night, and I have ace-jack offsuit and plus one. I raise it up to $300, and action folds around to the straddler who decides on a call. He makes the call here, and we're off to a flop of queen-3-4 rainbow. Not a whole lot going on for my hand, and he checks it over to me. Could definitely bet sometimes or check. I decided to just check with ace-jack high. Let's see a turn, which is an eight. He now decides to bet pretty large on this turn, 600 bucks to go. Confused about what's going on in this specific hand, but definitely can't go anywhere just yet. For 600 with ace jack high, certainly should have a lot of bluffs, and him betting so big doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I make the call. Going to a river, which comes a six. So this board is super connected. Not really the run out I'm looking for with ace jack high, and now he bets 1,000. Can't imagine that he has too many strong hands to bet this size with, and I am just a non-believer. Ace Jack High definitely should be in the muck at this point, but I toss in the chip because I'm stubborn and call. He only has top pair and top kicker for Ace Queen. I was beat the entire way, and I dust off an extra $1,600. That was a little silly of me. Hello, hello. Quick break in the action to tell you guys about a very special offer and experience that I'll be giving away partnering with PokerCoaching.com. So on May 25th, we'll be hosting a sit and go $1,000 free roll for nine players. Myself and Jonathan Little will be playing. So two of those players and seats are locked up, but seven of you guys will win a free seat to this tournament where first place will pay $500, second place $300, third place $200, and it's all going to be essentially free. All you do is click the link down in the description below in my specific URL, pokercoaching.com slash rampage SNG. For as little as just $1, you can sign up through that link to the site, get access to all the tools, resources, and ways to get better at poker through Jonathan Little and pokercoaching.com. Not only are you able to browse the site for as little as just $1, on top of that, you'll also be entered into this giveaway and drawing where winners will get their seat on May 23rd. The sit and go event will happen on May 25th, 12 p.m. Pacific time. And the cool thing is that it's going to be live streamed as well. So it'll be all nine of us on FaceTime or Zoom or something like that. 
playing virtually and on live stream, which will be really cool as well. Free rolling a prize of $500 for first place. So if you want access to some really great coaching tools by Jonathan Little and the website, click the link down in the description below. If you just want to hop in and try to win a seat to play a free roll SNG with myself and Jonathan Little, do that as well. Click the link down in the description below. Big thank you to Poker Coaching for giving me the opportunity to share it with you guys. Let's share a rebound from that punt. I have eight six of clubs in the cutoff. There's an unknown player who limps, and against this table here, I'm happy to get involved early and often. I raised to $200, and looks like everyone else wants to get involved as well. The button, small blind, big blind, and under the gun limper all call. Multiway to a flop, we go. It is king five seven two diamonds. Action checks to me here on a king high board, and I'm open-ended. I think it's a great time to start betting into the field, although betting multi-way here isn't amazing. I start off with a bet of $600, and one by one, everyone folds until we reach the under the gun player. Last player to act, he does not fold, sadly. He's in here and makes the call for 600 so a little bit suspicious of what he could be holding. We're going to a turn, which is the ace of spades. And weird enough, on this card that should favor me a lot more, he actually leads for $600. Firing out the same bet as on the flop, seems like he's just doing a blocker bet of some sort. A little bit confused about the development of this hand here, but I'm still open-ended, facing a really good price to see a river. We're in position as well, I toss in 600 and this pot is building. We're off to a river which comes a board pairing 5, and that's definitely not one of the cards I wanted to see. Sitting with 8 high, he bets again for $1,100, and I'm thinking in my head, any chance I can raise and put this player into a tough spot, whether he has a king or ace? Theoretically, I should have all the strong hands, and if he's ever limping here from early position, it's usually just sets, and when this 5 pairs the board, it makes it much less likely for him to have a low pocket pair like 5s, for example. So I decided to put this to the test. Instead of folding and giving up, that's not what we do on this channel. I raised to $4,000. Would love to get this bluff through because this is a pretty darn big raise. If I get called early on this session, we are stuck piles, but luckily he folds. Oh, okay. Bluff number one of the day gets through, chipping up, and things are going well. Following that bluff, I pick up 8 9 of hearts in plus 1 and raise it up to $200. Only get action from the cutoff player who makes the call, so playing out of position here, the flop comes 6 6 7 to clubs. Not a flop that I should connect much on this board, even though I have two over cards and an open ended straight draw. I decided to check and potentially check raise, but he checks this one back smartly. Okay, let's see a turn which comes a queen. All right, I guess if I were to hit this card, I would bet it. So I go for a $350 bet, would be betting with bluffs and value, and obviously this time I have nine high. But for 350 he makes the call, so maybe he has a queen. I'm not really sure what he has, but let's try to suck out when the river is the five of clubs. Yep, that's going to be good enough for me. Beggars can't be choosers here. Although the flush draw gets there, I still get there with the best straight possible. And I decide to fire out 1150 now into the middle. And for this price, he goes over his options, thinks about it for a while, doesn't look comfortable. So the straight must be good. He ends up flicking it in for a call with king queen. And my straight is going to win this one. Nice to suck out and get value here. Just better to be lucky than good. Better to hit outs than bricking them. I think it's time for a premium now in this session. I've looked down at queens on the big blind. There's a hijack open to $150. Two players make the call to me. And yeah, let's bump up the price of poker in this really big game. I size up for a three bet to $1,100. Onto the hijack player now, who doesn't take too long before announcing another action, which would be all in. He's all in for about two to $3,000 more, so easy decision for us, but action folds with a small blind who thinks about it for a while, ultimately ends up folding, so I guess no more action here. I'm calling, never going anywhere, and I show my pocket queens. He asks to run it three times, and here in this home game, happy to be friendly and happy to agree to whatever the other player wants. So I say yes, and he has pocket sevens, and when the first flop comes a seven, 
wow, that really sucks. I'm glad we run it three times because now most likely I'll win the other two runouts. The runout number two comes total disaster, a straight for a chop. I hit one of the last two queens in the deck on the river to chop our straight. And runout number three, thank God, found a way to fade the case seven. So somehow running this three times, I was 80% to win. I end up losing the first run out. I end up chopping the second and I win the third. That means we chop the entire pot. 80% chance to win at least $3,000, ending up winning the blinds. Okay, hoping for some run good in this next hand. I pick up ace queen offsuit in the cutoff. There are two players who limp to me and I put in a raise to $250. Both the limpers make the calls, so... Let's see a flop in position, which comes jack 7 4 to clubs. Action checks to me here, and I'm happy to apply pressure against some limping ranges, so I bet 250, about one third the size of the pots. And for this price, they think it's pretty fair. They're both in there for a call. So I guess we're gonna navigate this one. The turn is the five of clubs. Action checks to me here, and I think in a vacuum, this card should suck for me, especially since we're multi-way. And although, yes, I do have the ace of clubs for the nut flush draw now, I decided to check this one back because I would do this with a lot of strong hands, and with marginal ones here, I would hate to see a check raise. We're going to a river hoping to see a club. It's the bink three of clubs. Although I will say the six of clubs is the straight flush. So I have the second nuts on this board. The first limper bets out $475. Other player folds and with the second best possible hand on this board, definitely going to raise for value and either deciding to go really large or really small. I want to get more money in here. So I decided really large to 2,500. I think a lot of players would make the call here with the queen or king of clubs, but it looks like he doesn't have it. He folds and said he didn't have a whole lot. So regardless, I think I was getting a fold whether I raised small or big. Still happy to go runner runner for the flush. Let's keep the run good going. I have king jack offsuit in plus two. There's a plus one open to $150 here. I think this is a fold a lot of the time, but given the table dynamics, I'm happy to play more hands than folding them. I make the call and the big blind calls as well. Three ways to the flop we go of king seven five to clubs. Big blind checks, plus one C bets, $100. And I have top pair, not the best top pair in the world. So definitely not going to raise. I just make the call and the big blind comes along as well. Going to a turn, which is the king of spades. So now my hand is improved at trips, feeling a lot better about my hand now. And plus ones continues to fire out a bet of 275. Sitting with trips certainly could raise, but I think he has a lot of bluffs because I just block a lot of strong hands. I decide to make the call, hoping he'll hang himself and bet more on the river. Big Blind now gets out of the way wisely, and we're going to a river heads up, which is another board pairing five. Double paired board, I'm basically sitting with the nuts unless I lose to king seven. Anyways, he fires out $475 now, and definitely time to raise, and just like last hand, I have a decision to go really big or really small, and on this board texture, trying to get called by worse pocket pairs and I guess like queens, jacks, tens, I'm not, I'm not really sure. Anyways, I decided to go small and raise to a thousand. Basically a min click, but he snap folds. Looks like we got him to bluff all three streets and we win. Always nice to have this situation happen, but couldn't get more money in the middle. With things going my way so far in this session, I pick up five, six off suit in the big blind. Not a great hand, but we all agree on a round of $100 straddles here. So with the $100 straddle on, this becomes a five-way limped pot. So five players in, 500 in the middle. The flop comes ace, 3-3, three, three, two hearts, and a club. Action checks around to the hijack player who limped preflop. He's been super active and super aggressive so far in this session, and he decides to bet out $275. Action folds to me here, and look... I'm gonna make a stand. This is not really the best hand to make a stand with as I have basically nothing. Anyways, I don't think he has it every single time because he's been C betting and betting every time. I check raise to $950 here, putting a stand at his aggressiveness, but he decides on making the call. So, all right. In a pretty dicey spot with a big pot brewing, I have six high and no equity. The turn comes the eight of clubs, brings in two flush draws on the board now, and 
I think I'm just going to commit to my line here. Maybe I can get an ace to fold one of these times because I can represent a three because, you know, I, if I play trash hands like five, six off suit, then I could have a three in my hand. Anyways, I bet $750. He does this weird thing where he checks his cards. And typically what I've known from playing live poker is that most people who do this aren't very strong a lot of the time. Ultimately, he ends up making the call after checking his card, so I'm thinking I'm going to have to barrel river and get him to fold a draw, or I, I don't know. But definitely have a big pot brewing in this one. Like I said, I have nothing going on. And when the river comes, the ace of clubs. Double paired board, backdoor flush draw gets there, and I think this is really strange. Arriving at the river with one of the worst hands ever, I think it's really hard to have bluffs on this board as well, because... If I bet any amount, right, I'm not getting a full house or an ace or anything to fold. But I still think that I have to bluff this combination, and I size small for that reason. Hard to have bluffs, so I bet small. I size to 1,300. He takes a few seconds and just flicks in a call with 10-8 of hearts. Oof. Gotta give him credit for that one for, for making the call here. This bluff goes down the drain, and I have nothing to say but nice hand. Pair of eights, not afraid, went with it, and got rewarded with thousands of dollars being pushed his way. This one hurt for sure. Picking up another premium and no better time because I decided to straddle to $300 this hand, and I pick up pocket jacks. So sick. There's a hijack open to $800, cutoff makes the call, and the small blind jams his stack of $375. And somehow, someway, like I said, I peel pocket jacks in this $300 straddle hand. Granted, we are playing very short stacked with a $10,000 cap, so basically playing like 35 big blinds deep. So I'm gonna commit stacks in the middle here because I peeled such a good hand and there's so much action. I bump it up to a raise of 3,500. The hijack player who raised to $800 folds, but onto this cutoff player who called the 800 and he thinks about it for a super long time. Looking at his stack, he's got maybe $5,000 total. And ultimately after thinking about it for a long time, he ends up just making the call for 3,500. So already committed like almost 80% of his stack in the middle. And I guess depending on whatever run out, it doesn't really matter that much. I'm gonna have to go all in regardless. So we're going three ways to a flop, have a very small main pot with a guy who went all in for 375 and a very big side pot. We're going to a flop of ace nine high, two diamonds. Seeing the ace on this flop obviously doesn't feel great, but with how little the cutoff has behind, I can't really do much but commit a stack, hoping to just deny equity if he has a hand like king queen and just get him to commit a stack. Who knows? I jam all in, which turns out to be around $1,900, so just under $2,000, and he's going to take his time. It's a big all-in. It's a big pot. He thinks about it for a few minutes. Let him take his time, and ultimately, he arrives at a decision, which is a call. Okay, we've got action. I show my hands, and this is the same player who had sevens when we chopped it on three different boards, so he wants to run it twice, and again, I'm just happy to comply. It's a home game that I'm playing in, so... Happy to just do whatever works for the rest of the crowd. The first run out comes and I end up making a set. So at least I have this one locked up. The second run out doesn't really do a whole lot to change the board texture, but the cutoff shows 10-9 of clubs. And oh my god, again, another massive all-in where we could have won a high percentage of the time. I end up chopping. Super ahead on this board and... <laughs> He just gets there on the second run out and a chop. The small blind player has queen jack off suit, so he ends up losing. So we chop the main, we chop the side pots, and not really the happiest of campers right now, but thus is the life of being a poker player. This next hand missed some preflop action, but there's a $100 straddle and becomes a five way limped pot. I have queen 10 off suit in the hijack, and the flop comes 10 4 5. The unknown player bets $100 here. The player to run right makes the call, and I have top pair, and it's not a bad top pair at that. So I end up making the call here. So we're going three ways now to a turn, which is a board pairing four. Now action decides to check to me, and I'm happy to bet for value here in this table. So I bet out $375 with not a whole lot out there on the board that beats me, but the unknown player folds and the player to my right decides on a call. So 
We've got action to the river, which comes a three. He checks for a third time, and certainly I could just check back with my pair of tens, but in this game here specifically, I decided to go for value with just one pair. I think I can get called by a lot worse, so I size to $1,000. He snap calls with six deuce off suit. <sighs> back to back hands. Um, not feeling great, to be quite honest. Hitting that gut shot straight draw on the river and getting paid when I could have checked back. A little bit of tilt settling in now, to be quite honest with you. Things not going my way, but always here to battle. I have ace, jack of diamonds in the big blind. Now playing five handed at this point in the night. The cutoff opens it up to $300 and folds to me. This is one of the better players at this table. So happy to battle. I decide to three bet to 1500. We're also playing plenty deep. And for 1500, he makes the call. Going to a flop of a six deuce to spades. And I have top pair here. I decided to mix in a check. Certainly could have just bet a lot of the time, but... Decided to check in-game, and he fires out $900 now once I check it over to him. Obviously, as played, not doing anything but making the call for $900. I have top pair, decent kicker for the most part. Let's see a turn which comes the 9 of spades. Not an amazing card to see. Flush draw does get there, but I check it over to him, and feeling much better when he checks it back. So we're going to a river, which is the four of hearts. At this point, I'm happy to just get the showdown or maybe just check and let him bluff. So that's what I do. I check it over to him and he fires out a massive bet. $3,500 to go on this river. That doesn't change a whole lot. And as played here with top pair, don't think I can fold ever. Don't really know how I could ever fold actually has played. I've really under the strength of my hand and an ace is really good in this spot, especially when he checks back the river when the flush completes. So I make the call and see the bad news. He has queen jack of spades. And he's going to win this one. So well played by my opponents. I guess he could have gotten a little bit more if he bet turn and maybe got me to sucker in and call the river. But um, yeah, pretty big blow to the stack. This was a sneaky big pot after what happened on the river. Next hand, still playing short-handed here. This one's quite a doozy. You just got to give you a warning. You want to strap in for this one. I have ace-queen offsuit with the $100 straddle on, and I raise it up to 300 The small blind makes the call, and the straddler of 100 puts in a raise to 1800 we're both playing super deep, and here for $1,800, I'm happy to battle in position with a good hand. I'm happy to see a flop, small blind folds, and we're going to a flop of 1098 rainbow. He starts with a check over to me now, and on a board texture that should favor me as the caller opposed to the three better, I decide to bet out $1,000 here. This isn't really like a bluff or a blocker bet or anything, just mainly like a range bet, I think. And for 1,000, he makes the call. So I guess I'm hoping to hit a jack to hit my gut shot straight draw. But when the turn is the deuce of diamonds, brings in two diamonds on board, he checks again, and I don't know what to do. Him calling this flop is suspicious of him having a strong hand here, as he certainly could. And uh, I don't know, ace, queen, high. Maybe we can hit a gutter. Maybe we can hit a pair. I check back. The river is now the three of diamonds. And I don't know, not super relevant, but I do have the queen of diamonds to block some flushes. He checks for a third time. And as played, him checking three times, I think I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure and bluff off a bunch. I fire out $4,500 into the middle. And this player goes deep into the tank for a long time. About four to five minutes go by. He starts talking and says that he just might call, but would be afraid if I have him beat somehow. And I don't know what to think. Not sure what he has. Maybe just a one pair holding that he's thinking about for so long. And look, I think if he calls, like ace queen high is not going to be good. He ends up tossing in a chip for a call. Oh no. I show my ace queen off suit and he insta mucks. Oh Jesus Christ. What is going on here? I got a tank hero call for $4,500 on the river and the opponent mucks and doesn't have ace queen high beats. Oh dear God. Feeling like I got gifted almost $5,000 here on the river. Feeling pretty happy about it. 
Leader asked his opponent what he had. He had ace jack high. So yeah, I guess I'm just lucky to be in the spots. Or let me actually scratch that. I soul read this player and I just knew he would call with ace jack high and went for max value. That's the story I'm going with. That's the script I'm going with and I'm sticking to it. Moving on to one of the last hands of the night. I have ace five of clubs in the big line. There's a cutoff open to $250 and action folds to me. I'm out of position and eh, I'm happy to three bet this one because it's a good hand. I three bet to 1150. The player to my left who straddled to $100 cold calls. That seems really strong and I don't have the best hand. The cutoff actually ends up folding. So weirdly played hand so far where I'm out of position. Player to my left is in here and we're off to a flop, which comes ace, jack, five, rainbow. Oh, sick. If I'm going to be three betting some bad hands, Hitting two pairs, very ideal. I start off with a bet of $700 here on a board that should really favor me a lot. And for $700, he makes the call. The turn comes the nine of clubs now, which brings two clubs on the board. This is so sick. I have two pair. I have the nut flush draw. What could go wrong? I decide to bet out $1,300 because I'm not really sure what to bet. I can go small because I have the entire board locked up. And for $1,300, he once again makes the call. The river is now an inconsequential deuce, I think, a complete brick on the river, and there's only one move left for me here on this river where I have two pair, and it's going to be a big bet, and I size to $3,500. Once again, we put another opponent into the blender as he goes over his options and thinks about it for a long time. About two minutes passes, I'm feeling confident because I have two pair, and you know, feeling like I won the lottery when I three bet a trash hand and hit two pair and go for value. Ultimately, he ends up sticking it in. I show and I crack pocket queens. So what a sick pot to end the night. Happy this player didn't go for another raise preflop because that would have scared me away and obviously wouldn't have won as big of a pot as I could have. So really nice way to end off the night. And after some frustrating chops, end up winning two big ones to end it. All right, wrapping up this session, so sick, a lot of hands to go over, and unfortunately didn't actually run too great. I showed you guys two different chops where uh, I was in as a heavy favorite, and I didn't show the third chop because it was so confusing. I wanna talk briefly about it. I got all in three ways, pre-flop. Aces, myself, and I was up against kings and tens for like a five to $6,000 pot. We ended up running it three times, and each run out, someone flopped a freaking set. <sighs> so uh, I think the first run out was like a 10 high run out, or 10, 10, on, the, 10 on the run out. Then I flopped a set, um, or had a set in the second run out, and Kings hit a set. So I ended up chopping that evenly, and that was a little unfortunate, tilting, whatever you want to call it. So uh, three massive chops, so it didn't run great, but overall, uh, the game was great and luckily that ace-queen hand got paid from ace-jack. I don't know how that happened, but that happened. I was in the game for $10,000, out of the game for $21,800, so really great success. I mean, I, I can only imagine if I didn't chop those three massive hands, could have won so much more too, but that's poker. Sometimes you get screwed, and uh, hopefully one of these days I'll post a, another really big cash session where I just steamroll the table and run hot and bink like I usually do. So hopefully I'll find that soon. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this one. It was a lot of fun and I'll see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you guys think about these home game videos. I'm trying to find those games where I trust and with large sums of money, it's got to be a game I trust with people I particularly am familiar with. And uh, this one was lucky that I'm glad that I got an invite to. Hoping uh, maybe I'll make another one at this particular place and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.